Welcome to our weekly Friday talk and tour series when we share the opportunity to visit the studios of our wonderful artists and hear about their works and inspiration. These visits are brought to you by the Duncan McClellan Gallery and the DMG School Project of St. Petersburg, Florida. Thank you for joining us. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, hi, how are you? Great to see everybody. Um, uh, thank you very much for being here. Uh, we really appreciate you coming each week. Um, we have a really great show this week. Uh, uh, Julie Johnson, uh, all the way from Brittany, France. Um, she uh, was a great uh, uh, person to have here at DMG School Project. She was the winner of one of our uh, residencies at DMG and she really worked hard. Uh, it was great to get to know her, and, and that's one of the great things about the residencies, is we get to know the artists, we get to watch them work, uh, have them go through a lot of trial and error in, in some cases, um, but uh, I'm really happy that uh, we are able to provide this. Um, it, they've earned every bit of it, and it was a great thing to have Julie um, at our studio. Um, so uh, thank you for being here. Uh, I'd like to thank my team uh, for uh, everything they do for us each week and producing these and much more. Uh, so Mary, if you'll take it away, thank you. Thank you, Duncan. And again, thank you to everyone who's joining us today, and especially to Julie Johnson joining us from France. Uh, she's stayed up late and uh, done a lot of work prepared for this presentation for you. As Duncan said, Julie was a residency artist in, I believe, 2019. She worked hard while she was here to develop a new body of work and since her residency, she continues to develop her bodies of work and her skill set as she's been exhibited internationally in a number of galleries. So uh, we are so pleased to have her with us and to be able to share her international uh, scope of, of glass art. And um, Julie, when you're ready, if you'd like to say hi to the audience and let us know when you're ready to uh, start the presentation. Julie Johnson. Hi. 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 Here I am, 10 o'clock in France, um, and I'll just introduce myself very quickly. You'll hear a very Scottish accent, not French at all. And I'll explain that in the, um, the presentation, how I managed to turn up, why I'm living in France, etc., and also the influences uh, that having different cultures has in, uh, on my work. So we we'll probably could start the, the introduction. As we're starting, Julie, I just want to remind everyone that if they'd like to ask a question, please enter it into the chat and we'll uh, refer your questions to Julie. And uh, please put yourself on mute. If you'd like to see Julie speaking and not the whole list of visitors, please choose speaker view in your upper right hand corner. Thanks. Here you go, Julie. Okay, so I'll just walk through. This is. This is my workshop, the, the facade. I probably will say some French words because I'm speaking in English, but kind of thinking in French. So this is the, the, fr the front of my workshop, which is also a shop uh, where we sell, make and sell um, everything um, to, to the public in this town in Brittany, France. So I took this just last Saturday. Our shop's closed at the moment. Everything's closed in France. Um, so our shop is closed, there's no customers, the town is empty. Anyway, a little visit of the, the, the boutique uh, where we make production um, glass, gardenware, vases, things like that. Everything basically. Um, but we also have what we call the cube, the gallery, uh, where we have um, our more personal works. It's small cubes, so but it's important, it shows people that we are capable of doing artwork and not only production work, as in the vases, etc. and that we have um, 
personalities. We're not just makers, we're also artists. I say, I say we as, the, as we are two. You know, I have me and my associate, whose work is also in this little gallery. Right, you can see from the gallery in the shop that it looks onto, in the background, the workshop. This is my Eric's work, this is my associate's work. Birds on branches. Some of the earlier works which you'll see later, earlier, yeah. And this is some of my business partner's work. So we zoom up to, which is the platform where there's the hot shop. I have a few people working for me. I have a salesperson, uh, two assistants, my associate, two or five. This is charging day, so everything's turned off. And there is some cold working area and also a fused glass area. This is one of the assistants. So I'm going to take you downstairs to another level where there's a stock and cold work. And this is another shop that's going to be developed. A kind of dark dungeon you know, where we do all the bricolage, all the mechanical stuff, also sandblasting, packaging, painting, motorbikes, everything's down here. And it will turn into a better cold workshop in the coming year, I think. So it's, uh, we have quite a lot of space. There's another level which we'll take you up to. trip over somebody here on my way on my way up. So now I'm taking up you to up to the, the second floor, which is basically um, where I escape to because when you work with a lot of people and um, you never get peace. You know, there's people always asking you questions. So I'm still down. So this is Eric, my um, associate. And this is stock and packing and where we take photographs and things like that. And it's also where I can have some time to, to think about my work, my personal work when I get the chance to do it and spread out bits and pieces that I could be working on, which is really important for me in the, in the process of thinking about things because things are made in the hot shop, but uh, I like taking pieces from pieces I've made in the past, pieces that have never come to anything. So there's a little mix of things that have been happening here, the dogs and the birds and the branches, etc. So now, uh, after the film, we go on to talk about me. <laughs> so basically, I'm Scottish, and I was born on the west coast of um, Scotland, uh, which is marked in red, and I lived there until I was 17. And then I left because I wanted to, I wanted to find the, I think it was the paths paved with gold, and they weren't in Scotland. <laughs> you can go on to the next. So this is, this is a recent photograph, but it's kind of, for me, it kind of represents Scotland when I left Scotland at 17, which was really dull, really boring, with no prospects whatsoever. And that's how I felt about Scotland up until maybe the, the last few years. And it's the, the other side of Scotland, which I love when I visit, and which is part of me, uh, and which has a lot of inspiration for the work that I would do. So would you say you were an outdoors person, Julie? Oh yes, definitely. Yeah. But I can get out there. But I'm not in the hot shop. Swimming. <laughs> well, when I'm not in the hot shop, I've got to be outdoors. Uh, this is um, I kind of called this photograph uh, first and last supper because um, this was Christmas last year, just before I came to Florida, three days before uh, coming to Florida, and it was the first 
Christmas then the first Christmas I've ever had with my family, basically, because I'm always working. And it was the last one because I've not seen them for a year because of the COVID, I'm not, we can't go to, can't travel. So I'm really glad that uh, I had that time with them. It was really important. And also just, um, this is this a Scottish, French, Italian family, we're all mixed. So that was my family and where I'm from. And then we start kind of on my little journey in glass and I left Scotland and I went to London and stuff like that and lived and partied and then but I was still looking for something and um, I decided that I would go to a rock in the middle of the sea with 500 people on it with no cars and no lights um, and that's where I found glass on this rock and it's, this is this this island this tiny island um, is in the middle of the channel between France and uh, Britain and I stayed there for five years and I did uh, somebody a glass blower was there I don't know why but a glass blower was there and he was looking for somebody and that somebody was me so this is my first year I think I was 21 uh, running around short hair not caring about anything and that was my first job um, glass glass assisting and that was the start. And um, then, yeah, then I, I didn't come straight to France, actually. I went to art college, but didn't like it. So I decided that France was sounding much more exciting. Um, so I managed to find a job as a glass assistant in France, in Brittany, keeping on my road. Um, and that was when I came to France in 1994, 1993, 94. And I've been in France ever since. This was me kind of starting to develop small uh, techniques in glass, working in a studio in Saint-Malo when I was 25. Started making my own production, but it was production, candlesticks, perfume bottles, things like that. So that's when I started kind of getting a, a hand. Right, from the last photograph and this photograph, there is 25 years have gone past. So a lot of life, a lot of things have happened, but this is kind of basically my life today. Um, this is where I live. Um, so it's kind of like um, a French version of uh, St. Pete's, kind of smaller, a uh, little marina, beachside, stuff like that. Um, so this is the, the port where I come to work every day. I like the chilled, chilled out French lifestyle. Um, it's something that I really love now um, after, and this is where I call my home, Campol. This is where I live and this is where I work. This is where I've had my, had my daughter, etc. So I'm um, very attached to it. This is my French family. This is my daughter, who's 20, who's a design student. Um, my partner, Pierre, for the last 10 years, who supports me in all my glass antics and lets me work, work, work when I want to and doesn't ask too much of me. Um, and he, he is a very important role in being able to do residencies and do the artwork because it does it is preoccupying you know it does take you away from home and holiday and so and he's not at all a glass person so that's my French family he's French my daughter's French and um, that's uh, oh this is my this was last uh, last year this was my team from work uh, everybody happened to work last summer all at the same time. It's not there's not usually that many of them, and I kind of like antics. I like having fun. Um, as I said to Mary, uh, often in the hot shop, it's very tense, and especially when you get young people, you know, it's not always easy. So it's kind of good to have fun and do things which you've never done before. <laughs> Uh, so these, the next four, four photographs are basically kind of what I would call my kind of inspiration for work, uh, for, the, for my personal work. And it's not this photograph, it's not the next photograph, it's a kind of combination which of these photographs which represent um, places like the last photograph was the Standing Stones in the island of Orkney, it's just an example but it's places that have very, very strong vibrations, you know, really kind of create strong feelings. Um, and this certainly did. 
Um, this is like this is my grandmother's apple. It's a tiny wooden apple, and um, it's like memory for this photograph. It kind of represents memories, like memories from childhood, memories growing up, memories, and how memories are important in in my work. Thoughts, the thought process. Um, I had a different explanation for these before, but when I think about it, it's like a, then I noticed that lots of things that I do are in fragments, the pieces, the like the memories and the places we have visited. It's, it's fragments of fragments of life and collections, and um, and all these things I kind of gather and store, but in my in my head sometimes in pots and in bowls. But these these things are all gathered as we get older, and um, when I'm making glass, they kind of come as little flashes and they, they, they will then may, maybe be created into a piece. It's the same thing, it's um, kind of fra fragments, also experiments, um, and um, how can work can kind of evolve from a very simple idea that you've never made before. This is this is an idea that I really want to work on, uh, writing on glass paper and, 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 and putting that into some kind of composition, so I like making compositions. So Julie, how much of your time uh, do you spend uh, creating new bodies of work or thinking about that? Or do you find that running a shop, uh, a production shop and a shop where you are creating new work takes up a lot of your creative energy? How do you balance that? I try and do residencies in Florida <laughs> because it often gets really frustrating. I think I think I think about it a lot and I don't do it very often. It's, so that's it's the, the contradiction between having worked so hard to get a shop where you have uh, the equipment to make and then the shop really works well and you have very little time so you just try and try and something with actually when I came back from the states um in February, it was yeah right. We're going to we're going to I'm really going to do some con make a continued work from the things I made in in the Duncan McClellan Gallery. Covid hit, you know. So I'm hoping that January February I'll have a little bit more time again. It's a challenge. It's a challenge, but we keep trying to work towards it. You know, this was um, I haven't been sculpting all my life. Um, I was, I didn't even know sculpting existed really until uh, like eight, eight years ago. I just didn't know that that, or I didn't even think I'd be able to do it. I didn't, I just didn't think it was for me, you know. I just didn't think I was somebody that would be able to do that. And then I kind of decided that I was going to try and put, try and because I was kind of, I had, re I had reached kind of a dead end, you know, like um, getting satisfaction from my work. So I thought, right, I'll try that whatever trial. So I put all my energy into that. I did a, a master class in the States. Um, and then I started working on the animal heads, which were really, we can see the influence, which is really Scottish, Gaelic, you know, um, um, what you call the fables and things like that. That was all the, the ideas that were mixed when I made a series. I think there was about six or seven animal heads. And this one was called, uh, the last one was called Brea. And Brea is Scots is also French, and there's an island just next to where I live called Brea, and Brea also means charming. And I was like, I was using words also to play with words and trying to search the words in Scots Gaelic and French that had links, and um, also its expressions. It's how I can uh, feel or how I think animals might feel or people feel. So this is he's um, grumpy, he's kind of angry, bad tempered. Um, I kind of feel like that quite a lot too, but so it's probably me, the old goat, you know, like. <laughs> and the apple I use a lot. This was a um, Millis. I, I still have this one. I really like this one. Um, uh, she's still in that little gallery. So, uh, and this one's available. Right, I put this one there for a different reason. This was uh, one of the first ones. Um, and uh, I put it there because the expression, I think Mary wanted me to talk about it, was often the determined, it kind of looks how I feel sometimes, you know, really determined. I'm just like, Ugh! I'm so <laughs> determined. 
and and that's how I feel, that's how I look inside, you know. If you can see it, I don't know. Maybe it's just me that can see it, but that's how I feel a lot of the time. <laughs> well, uh, this was sorry. Uh, this is following. These are antlers, obviously, but then. Um, I was asked to make uh, a subject for them for, in, in, in this residency, it was slightly different. You had to make work for um, Northlands, which is in the north of Scotland. <clears throat> and I made antlers, and then I started my own body of work. So this, these were basically um, a series of antlers for them. But the antlers are not just antlers. There was a lot of kind of, well, there was a thought process around the color, the name. Um, also the form and the size. So the three photographs are kind of a, a collection. This one was stag and it was, because um, it's the biggest one, it's kind of most angular. Um, it's also, it's dark, kind of dark purple, which is um, a very noble color. These were entwined, so it was kind of meant to be, you know, well, kind of, I could, it could be lovers or it could be compatibility, or it's just, it's colors that work together and there's engraved um, Scottish symbols. Around so do you have the sandblasting uh, machine at your shop as well? Yes, these were made in Scotland in Northlands, but I do have a sandblasting and I have a yeah, quite a lot. And when we don't have something, then I generally try and get it. And this one was fawn, just because it's simple. Right, this is my garden. Nope. <laughs> this is my garden, but um, also it's a garden in the spring. It's this garden in the springtime, which is Basically, I love the springtime. It's my season, you know. It's just, I'm just like, I hardly sleep. I've got loads of energy in the spring uh, uh, and ideas, and I don't like the winter at all. So, the spring is something, um, the seasons is something which I realize I'm very influenced in when I'm working. And the following works are basically everything that I made. The following works have been made in the springtime. You can just see it, you know, it's, you'll see the, these are, these are the first, these are also works that I made following the Northlands residency because I realized that I would, to make my own work, I would be having to make work that I could make quite a lot on my own because effectively having my business, it's difficult to, to really have time to have team teamwork. Like, so to get on, I would be making birds and things that are quite a lot, a lot of the time solo and then making compositions with them. So these were the first compositions. I enjoyed making flowers and the compositions and the birds, all in the birds are generally in overlay. Nests and it's, it's, it's all really influenced by the spring and things blooming and coming to life. And these are the colors that this is um, from a different series, but this is still at springtime with the wren and then in Calmo, which and what is what I started later. Sorry? Oh, what would the approximate size of those pieces be? I believe. It's, uh, it's not that big, uh, 47. I generally, when I, every time I write down the size of my work, it's like 47 centimeters. So I think that's about the size that I can make. <laughs> All right. It doesn't seem to get any bigger, you know, it's 47. <laughs> And that, that is about limit. inches, yeah. About Not seven. inches, centimeters. <laughs> inches. <laughs> yeah. So these were a simpler version as well. I like the color because I'd made the Encalmo with the wren and um, it was a simpler. These are not huge, like 40 high, 40 centimeters high. And I was playing with expressions and different tilting the bird's heads and things like that. And I like the color combinations. and. This is the famous bird and branch, which I'm developing and I've been developing it for ages and I think it's slowly coming there because I really like this piece and, uh, and, and it's not a vessel and it's different and it's on the wall. So I'm still, I'm getting there slowly. And you're working on the metal part, correct? That um, would attach? Uh, yeah, but I've been having it. I, had, I made the prototype when I was um, on the residency. I managed to get the prototype here and find somebody to make it. And then it took them months to make it. And I got it back this week and uh, sent it to be, um, I don't know how you call it there. It's not just spray painted, it's a lacquer paint sure. today. So I'm hoping then I can make the branches and get it done. 
Beautiful. Uh, still talking about uh, seasons, so the winter and the autumn, which follows on to, it's not just the colours though, because it's also a way of thinking, like um, less dynamic, a bit slower, kind of a bit grumpier, and I think that reflects in the work as well. So the next series are, are dark, and more and Scottish actually, I feel there's more of a Scottish influence in, in the winter or the autumn works, you know, it's kind of, well, I like the reds and the crows and, and darker colours. The next ones are in Calmo series. And I used, uh, I decided to do crows for this work because um, I didn't, you didn't, I didn't need to do colour. Colour wouldn't have worked. We wouldn't have. Um, and so it was just black. So then you could just look at the silhouette of the bird and therefore you just have to work about its position and not necessarily all the colour and things like that. And then, so I could play with different scenarios with the the birds, and these all have names. You know, like there was there's there's again there's about seven, there, there were about seven or eight, and he's kind of protecting his cherry. And then there's another one which has got the cherry in the mouth. Um, and this one's taken off. So um, I enjoyed kind of playing with all the once I got. And once I kind of get better at making the birds, I could then change his position and start to think about the story I could tell. And also because I, I had, I wanted to bring in all this time I've been making production um, to making calmos because I could make them quite well. And um, so it combined the two skills, which are very different. Sculpting and glass blowing are very, very different things. This was last week and I just love the colours and you can see from the following two pieces or three pieces that these are the colours of the autumn as well. This is where I live. Uh, right, this is also, this is another series, this was still with the ideas of the Calmo, I made these before the, the crows. Um, I think it's very British actually these, they're kind of, um, they, they give me that thought, um, the colours. Um, the colours and the style, and these were called, um, uh, uh, I can't remember the name, Sentinels, these were, uh, these were from the Sentinel series, and the idea was based on the Canopic Jars, when I first started making them, and then it, but I didn't want to stay, uh, the idea was the Canopic Jar, but I didn't want to, to represent that, so I kind of abandoned then trying to look too closely into other ideas and then just let my ideas um, take over. So the bird is meant to be the idea that, that he is kind of looking over what's in the vessel. Almost so these are a combination of hot sculpting and calmo and then in some of the previous you also have cane work as well? Oh there's no cane work no. Don't do cane work. It's just a wrap. <laughs> no cane work. No, geez, in Calmo's sculpting. Overlays. Uh, right, so my daughter's left home recently. So now I have a dog. So that's basically why I've been making dogs and things like that. I've suddenly, in the past couple of years after, I didn't, I really didn't want to become known as the bird lady and I wanted to have other skills and be able to express myself differently and not be uh, closed into one subject. So I started making the animals. This was the first one that I made. And I had to have a little bit of improvement and then I started making the, the mice and the rats and then playing with ideas. Uh, storytelling and things like this. Um, so I started making the dogs. I didn't actually really like dogs before, you know, I just started making the dogs and then I wanted the dog and now I'm trying to make dogs all the time. So I don't really know where that's going to go. Foxes, I think it's because they're difficult and I try and make, I want to make them on my own so and get them right. So you just uh, make loads of them to try and make them the best way you possibly can. And then once I'll be able to make them, then I'll properly, you can start trying to tell a story with them, using them as kind of figures and on whatever theme that I want to, I want to, I want to tell. 
So this was um, making the Encalmos, which you have in the gallery. Um, this was so the last week. Your residency was how long, uh, Julie? Six weeks? I think. Uh, five, yeah, five weeks. It was this year in 2020. Oh, that's right. Year. Yeah, it was still this year. Uh, so when, when, I, when I came, um, I really didn't have a clue what I was going to make. Um, and I had to kind of, the first week it was like, Whoa. What am I going to make? Um, I knew I was going to make animals, but I didn't know what I was going to do with them, how I was going to, I knew I had to make something at the end uh, of the residency and show. And I'd had this idea, I'd been on holiday um, and visited the Les Grottes de Lascaux, or oh, it's the, the cat, the, the Grottes de Lascaux caves, uh, with the prehistoric drawings. And I decided that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. Nothing to do with St. Pete's as far as we can possibly get away from that. That was, that was just the idea that I, I had and I was going to stick to it and I was going to stick to my guns and that's what I was going to do. So the idea was to make, um, I don't know, I came up with foxes and I was going to make deer and I was going to make birds. That's, a, that's the three things I was going to make. I didn't have time to get them all done. I needed another, I needed another month so that I can do the deer. So um, these, were, these are glass line drawings of Foxes, which I was doing every night. I've never done it before. You pull long glass um, stringers, and I had a little torch, uh, which Emily showed me how to, to do, and I learned how to draw these things. And I was doing it every night. Got to get this. Got to learn how to draw these things. Got to learn how to draw these things. And then these little line drawings would be picked up on the top of an encalmo, the white part. That's the birds. And um, so most of them went wrong. Uh, that's just most of the vast majority of them went wrong, but that was the idea. And you see that the line on the top is where the, is the, the glass line drawing and the rest is powder that I'd powdered onto the, the marble, the marble, the marble, uh, and picked it up on a roll up. Sometimes it works, sometimes it didn't work. So I had to try different techniques. Um, I think the birds worked really well. I think it might be the colour, the colour, because all the colour, the colour powder doesn't always work in the same way. So you can't just decide that that's the colour you're going to choose, and it's always going to work in the same way. It's something another thing that I really like to develop that kind of technique of picking up in the line drawings. I think there's a lot of, I think there's a lot to do with that. So I made the top of the, I made the birds. And the line drawn, then I made the top of the encalmo, then you pick up the encalmo, you make the bars, and then you sculpt the animals. So there's there's a lot of work, there's a lot of things that can to to get right, you know. Yeah, I really I really enjoy it. I like this idea, I'd really like to develop it. I think it's a really interesting idea. Um this one, it's, got, it's called Foxborough, but I think I actually renamed it Sing to the Moon, because this is when I took the photograph, it was dark one night, and there's the stars out, and I, I like the idea that he was kind of singing to the moon. <laughs> so, Julie, how did you feel about a residency that had two people? You mentioned a little bit that uh, Emily helped you uh, to create these drawings. Um, do you feel that a two-person residency was really valuable to you and also to Emily? Um, can you talk a little bit about that resi residency experience? Um, I don't know. Uh, I think it's, it's it can, I don't know. I don't really know how to, there's, there's good and bad. Huh? It's difficult working with somebody that you've never worked before. Sure. You really, you really, really, with completely different levels, you really have to be very, very open-minded and take it as it comes. Mm -hmm. And it definitely has an influence. And I think we, I think we came out not too bad, really. I think we did well. I think both your bodies of work were incredible. Yeah. It was, um, it's, it's, it's not easy work. It, we come from two different, we, we were 25 years age difference. Right. Um, 
Emily is not a real hotshot worker. She has lots of school experience and me has been in production all these years and we live together and you work together and you've got to find common ground and you've just got to get to the end of your five weeks and have work. So you just got to do it, you know? So I think we did well. I don't know. There was obviously difficult moments, but I think we did okay. <laughs> and definitely well, like drawing things like that, you know, if, She's doing that. Oh, I'm going to do that. Okay, right. So, um, so she definitely brought in. That was I, I would have never have done that, and I didn't know it existed either. So, yeah. Well, we would love to have you back and to do another uh, residency. So uh, maybe we'll make it a little longer. <laughs> I'd love to. I'd love to. Really enjoy it. Really, really. It was like it was like hell on earth, but I loved it. <laughs> well, you worked very hard. Yeah, it was difficult at the end, but at the end, I just started, the last week, I was just really getting into the the swing, you know, um, I was starting to feel at home, you know, knowing where everything was, etc. It takes a little bit of time, but yeah, no, I really enjoyed it, and um, it's worthwhile, very, very worthwhile. It brings us, even, you know, to travel so far, it puts you in a completely different, completely different sort of lifestyle, surroundings, different season, everything is different, so... But you just think about making glass. That's all you do. So it's kind of it's paradise. Well, we <laughs> loved having you. Thanks Thank for you having me. Uh, so yep. that's the end of uh, uh, the. This is your last day. Is this correct? Uh, at the rest. Uh, it, it was the last day of blowing, I think. And uh, my hands were having a really hard time. Yeah. They were just like blistered all over, but it was just like, yeah, oh. but it had to keep, had to, had to keep going. <laughs> and it kind of sums up glass blowing as well. That's it. It's just, it hurts and you just got to keep going. You know, it's really, it's a really difficult job. It's a difficult job, but it's not easy. It's, so, not, all, uh, it's not all birds and flowers. Uh, it's so difficult. <laughs> well, you know, I think people don't uh, don't really realize what a residency is, and maybe uh, perhaps you and Duncan can talk a little bit about what your um, expectations were, and Duncan also what you hope to offer an artist like Julie when she comes for a residency. Well, if I can go first, Julie, uh, we started the residencies because um, when I first started working in glass, I had to work three jobs to be able to afford a limited amount of time in a hot shop. And uh, the costs are enormous, uh, and even more so today. Um, and I, I don't know of another medium other, you know, than glass. It's, it's got to be the most expensive medium to work in. And uh, the people that are gravitating to uh, making it, um, they couldn't think of another material because that's the one that grabs their heart. And by providing these six weeks, it started out, all I could afford was four weeks. Then we started doing six weeks. Uh, we do realize that eight week residency would be even more valuable uh, because it is true. Uh, it seems like the last couple of weeks, the residencies, they're going into these aha moments and it's just then that they get the breakthroughs. Um, and, you know, by, uh, you know, some of our residencies are experienced in doing uh, lectures, uh, but some aren't. So we help them in that way. Um, we give them a show uh, that exposes them to a lot of our patrons, the people that support us. Um, and uh, it, it's, I think, an important part of what DMG does. I mean, yes, the education in schools with the kids um, is really important, and that is a, a big thrust for us. But I, as an artist, understand how helpful it is and also recognize that the artists have bills at home they they have a lot of expenses that are ongoing at home and then they still come and see us and and hopefully we're making a great experience for them 
Um, and I hope it was Julie. So wh what were your feelings and what would you suggest that we could make it better? I don't, I don't know. I think it's a very personal thing. Can you please everybody, you know, that's, uh, um, I would say that eight weeks, it might not change much, you know, because the five weeks, I've already done another residency of five weeks, six weeks. So you, you need that pressure at the end. And if it was eight weeks, you might kind of slow down and the pressure would be still at the last two weeks. You know, it might, might, you might not have developed any further your work. So the time, is, the time is okay, you know, the time's good, the time's, I don't think it would change anything, you need that, you're going to have the pressure, whether it's eight weeks, it's just you'll be more chilled out for the first three weeks, you know, that's all. Mm. Uh, I don't know, I've got, I've got really nothing to say about advice or anything to give, I think it's a very personal thing, you take, you take what's there and you just go for it, you know, like to have a workshop that you can work in that's open. 24 hours a day. It is difficult. Four hours, four hours, that's difficult, right? Four hours for me is not a long time, you know. Right. A day, you know, like when also like, I'm not 30 years old, I'm 50 years old, so I kind of get tired, right? So once I've spent four hours assisting somebody else and then I'm then I'm pretty exhausted and you start on your own, you know, but like you do it, and that's what you do because that's the deal, you know. So that's the, that was the deal in other residencies I've done as well. It's just the way it is, and you at the end of the day, you've still got your work. At well, the end of the I, day, you, you still do your work. That's it. So it's good. Well, we I, I got to tell you, it, it, it energizes us every time we have these residencies come in. It's a, a whole different way of how they work. Um, uh, what I've been in, so impressed with is how everybody works so hard. They really... Uh, nobody's using this as a vacation to go no. to the beach. And, you know, everybody's really working hard. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd like people here to know that, you know, because when I when I say I'm going to the States for six weeks on a residency, they go, oh, ah, son. <laughs> no, they do, they do. They just don't, they just don't get it. They just don't get oh, it's, it's It's not work. It's just like a holiday. Um, it took me months, you know, I came back to France and I had to start work again immediately, but it took me months to get back to kind of okay shape. <laughs> I was like a wreck, a wreck. <laughs> I really was, I was a wreck. I think, I think it's maybe just since September, October that I kind of start to feel normal again, you know. <laughs> My hands well, are... Okay. Yeah. Irene uh, has in the chat that she uh, she asked you what you would do in your free time uh, while you were here and and you laughed because you knew you said you knew that you would be working your tail off and uh, no free time until the last day and you really were um, so dedicated and and we could see that and the work that you produced uh, you know was really really wonderful yep. and uh, we hope that that new body of work you know, will take you to yet another body of work and another source Absolutely. of inspiration. So we Emily are, worked very, very hard as well. She, I think it was because there's two of you, you know, oh, she's still working. I've got to stay, let's keep working, you know? So that's also the good thing about being two people. It's kind of... Right. Well, we're, we're so fortunate to have had you and, and we know that you stayed up. It's almost 11 o'clock in France. And uh, you know, Night -night. thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, maybe you can sleep in on the morning in a little bit because it's Saturday. I, I yeah. hope. Got my hope. swim tomorrow morning. <laughs> oh, and what, okay. So maybe. what do you think Celsius is the water? Oh, I don't know. Um, Eleven or twelve? Ooh. Oh. It's not sure. Ah, uh, yeah, it's not sure. Maybe. <laughs> well. Um, Thank you. Well, thank Let you. us know how that goes. Huh? Yes. Let us know how that goes if you went swimming or not. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll tell you. Don't worry. I'll tell the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell everybody will know I've been swimming. <laughs> you'll hear it. It won't even be me that tells you. You'll you'll find out from somebody over there. <laughs> Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, and thank you. Yeah. 
Uh, everyone, uh, we're taking next week off um, so that everyone can enjoy the Thanksgiving week. Hopefully uh, you're able to spend some time with, with your families and uh, be safe. We'll start up in December with Eric Hilton, uh, who will be a fascinating pre presenter. Um, again, Julie, such an honor and a pleasure to have you. And uh, please everyone stay safe and have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank you. Okay. Bye, thank Bye. you. Thank you, Julie. I hope to see you in Thanks, person. Julie. Yes. <laughs> Bye.